In today's video, I'm going to show you everything that you need to know in order to get started with print on demand using AI. Everything's got AI now. This is the absolute easiest way to get started in the business. Let's make some money then. Now, before we get started, let me know down in the comments below what your thoughts are on print on demand and starting print on demand with AI. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. We just recently implemented print on demand onto the AutoDS system. So we want to hear what you all have to say about it and what you all think of it. So let me know down in the comments below. Now, I do have a quick disclaimer before we get started. So for this, we are going to need a budget. Unfortunately, when it comes to using AI for designs, pretty much every single AI model that you use in order to get high quality designs, you are going to need to pay a subscription. Otherwise, you're going to get low quality files that are not going to be good for print on demand and most platforms won't even accept them. Now, the budget we're going to set aside for this is going to be $20. But that's all? That's all we're going to be using. And we're not even going to be using everything. Now, the biggest chunk of our budget is going to go to the AI system itself which is Kittle. So for this, we're going to be using the Kittle website. And on here, you have access to tons of different design resources. So they have some really cool designs such as these right here. And it's also this Wolfgang right here, which you can actually click on these and you can edit absolutely everything from this image. So you can edit everything from the text. Let's say we want to change Wolf to, I don't know, Hound Gang. These other elements are all also editable. So you can move around the Wolf itself these accents over here, the eyes, literally everything that's on the screen, you can edit, but that's not what we're here for. We're going to be using their AI system. But before we go ahead and jump into that, this is going to run you $15 monthly. That's going to be on their monthly plan. If you want to get a discount, then you can subscribe to their annual plan, but to get started, you'll be perfectly fine with their monthly plan. Now, the other chunk of the budget is going to go to the AutoDS trial. That is going to run you $1 for two weeks. Now, the reason for using AutoDS is because they have their print on demand system. Now, on here, you have access to tons of different items. You have access to hoodies, T-shirts, phone cases, shorts, shoes, bedding, pretty much anything that you can print on, you have access to here. And you can upload your own designs to them. Now, as far as the platform to start selling on, my suggestion to you is go with Etsy. Etsy right now is number one for print on demand. It's probably the best place that you can get started on. And all of the different types of print on demand products, people go to Etsy looking for these types of items. So you already have people going on there looking for what you're gonna be offering. Now, to get started, the first thing we need to do is choose a niche. Now, when it comes to choosing a niche, there's two different niches that we need to focus on. The first one is gonna be our design niche. Then we're gonna focus on our product niche. Now, our product niche is dependent on our design niche. So let's say, for example, we want to niche down on pets. We want to start selling items that have to do with pets, either funny pet sayings, custom pet shirts, or personalized items for pets. In this case, the types of products that you're going to be looking for are going to be your typical t-shirts. So t-shirts for people that have to do with anything about pets or anything about, let's say, dogs or cats. You can also offer things like tumblers or coffee mugs that have some funny pet sayings or some funny pet owner sayings, you know, things along those lines. Personalized pet beds, that's also a huge option. And something like like personalized dog bowls or cat bowls. What you're not going to be offering when it comes to the pet niche is going to be something like a shower curtain or customizable bedding or a bedding set with a pet design on it. Those products don't necessarily go with the niche. You always want to make sure that the products you offer are relevant to the niche that you're in. Another example is cars. Let's say you're going to niche down on cars, specifically, I don't know, the tuner culture. So you're going to be targeting people that like to modify their cars. In this case, you're going to be offering items like t-shirts, hoodies, hats, lanyards, stickers, and a few other things. What you're not going to be focusing on is dog bowls. So you're not going to be offering customized dog bowls when you're in the car niche. You're not going to be selling any household print on demand goods because again, it's not relevant to the niche. So always make sure you keep that in mind. You niche down for your design and you niche down for relevant products. When it comes to choosing your niche, I highly suggest that you go with something that you know about or something that you're passionate about, specifically because you already have knowledge on that subject or on that topic. So going back to the car reference, if you're going to be niching down to cars, then you're going to have the knowledge that you can niche down to even more specific groups like people who like luxury cars, people who are tuners or people that like to modify their cars to make them go faster, people that like to compete with their cars in shows for looks. So you're going to be mindful of all of the different niches that are sub niched within your niche. If that makes sense, I know it's a lot of niching down, but pretty much your main niche is going to be cars. Your sub niche is going to be tuners or luxury cars or sports cars. So let's niche down on cars and let's go ahead and start creating our first design. Now, I'm not very good at coming up with designs, so this is what we're going to do. 
we're actually going to ask AI. So let's run over to chat GPT and let's ask it to give me a funny design that has to do with sports cars that are tuned. Just something generic. Let's see what it comes up with. All right. So how about a playful design for a fictional tuning shop called Turbo Tickles Garage? all while wearing oversized sunglasses and a big grin. Maybe add some sparkles and speed lines to emphasize the turbocharged excitement, tickling horsepower to roaring laughter. All right, so this is a pretty interesting description. If you wanna read the whole thing, then just go ahead and pause the video or just keep watching and you'll see what AI comes up with. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go ahead and take this, so sports car all the way down to turbocharged excitement. Let's go ahead and copy that. Then let's run over back to Kittle. We're gonna to go to tools. And we're going to hit up the AI image generator. Let's start creating with Kiddo AI. All right, so our previous design is still on here. Let's just click on my projects and new project. Now, when it comes to our print settings or our design settings, this is one thing that you need to know, and this is absolutely crucial. So pay attention as when it comes to the width and the height and the DPI, this is extremely crucial. I like to switch this over to inches and I like to keep it at a minimum of 15 by 15 inches or 38 by 38 centimeters. Now, as far as the DPI, this never go below 300. Anything that's below 300, chances are it's not gonna be accepted by the system in order to be used for your print on demand product. The DPI is pretty much the resolution and it's pretty much in the simplest terms saying how sharp your image is gonna be and how high quality it's gonna be. So you always wanna make sure that this is at a minimum of 300. You don't have to go anything above 300, but don't go anything below 300. So we have 15 by 15, 300 DPI. Let's go ahead and create. Then we're gonna choose our Kittle AI down here. Now, here we have a few different options. First, we have our image generator or a logo generator. This is pretty self-explanatory. We're gonna be using the image generator because we're not looking for a logo. The prompt is where we're gonna write exactly what we want to create. Then we have our aspect ratio. Do we want it to be a square? Do we want it to be vertical or horizontal? And then we have a few different image styles, clip art styles and vector styles. These are pretty much how the image is gonna look or the type of artwork that the design is gonna use. Now the image styles, they have digital art, they have photography, they have anime, and they have a few more like acrylic, psychedelic, synthwave, and art deco. They also have clip art styles, which this is actually what we're gonna be going with, simply because these are a lot easier to remove the background. And when it comes to print on demand, most designs that we do, we don't want a background on them simply because if we have a background on it, it's going to be a very blocky design. And a lot of people don't like having just a simple square design on their shirt. They like things to be kind of cut out, die cut, but you'll see what I mean in a second. Now the clip art style that I'm going to choose is going to be cartoon. Vector style is pretty much just black and white. Now a vector is also a file type. It's not really too relevant to print on demand. So we're not going to go too deep into it, but just know that vector art is for the most part going to be single colors or multiple solid colors. So something like a photograph cannot be a vector art because it just has too much detail. So under the prompt, let's go ahead and type in what we copied over. So we have a sports car with exaggerated spoilers, wide body kit, and massive exhaust pipes. Let's remove all while wearing oversized sunglasses and a big grin. Let's take off the maybe and let's leave it at sparkles and speed lines to emphasize the turbo charge. We don't need excitement, keep it at turbo charge. And let's see what it comes up with. Generate image. This is going to be fun. All right. So this is what it gave me. And quite frankly, it actually looks really cool. I think Kittle did a really good job. All right. So as you can see, there's really no background. It's just the design itself. Now, let me show you what I was talking about earlier. So I'm going to switch this from cartoon to anime. I love anime. Now let's generate the image. Same prompt and everything, except the only thing we're changing is the art style. All right, so this is the other one that I came out with. And while this one is actually really nice, I think it came out fantastic. As you can see, there is a big square around it. So when you print this out, it's going to print out with that square. So you're going to have a square on your shirt or a square on whatever product that it is that you're printing. I refer to shirts a lot because shirts are pretty much the primary product when it comes to print on demand. It's what everyone sells and it's pretty much what got print on demand started. But this is what I'm talking about. So you're going to see this versus this on a shirt. So this one is just going to have the lines, no background. This one is going to be a square with the background. So we're going to remove this one. All right, so let's make this as big as we can. So let's stretch it out. And what we're going to do now is we're going to make a mock-up. Now, what is a mock-up? So simply put, a mock-up is one of the most important things that you're going to have to do in your print on demand journey. And what a mock-up is, is simply showing how your product is going to look. You're mocking up your product. So for this, we're going to put it on a shirt. So all we have to do is up here, click on mock-up. 
And here on the side, you have tons of other products that you can choose from in order to mock them up. But we're gonna start with a shirt and then we'll put it on something else. All right, so then this is how it's gonna look like. I like having it oversized, I like big designs. So that's what we're gonna do, we have it there. I think that looks pretty good. Let's change the color of this. I'm not a huge fan of that gray. Let's make it white. Oh wait, there is a background. Okay, so I just realized that there's a background on here. Let's move back to the editor. Let's click on our image and we're gonna use the AI background remover. So that white background that you saw, we're gonna get rid of that. We really don't want that because as you saw, it's gonna be a white background on your design and that doesn't look good. So let's go ahead and remove it using the AI background remover. All right, so after we removed it, we went back to the mock-up section. Now let's go ahead and make this a little bit bigger again. Maybe a little bit smaller. All right, that looks good. Let's check out the different colors now. So there you go. Now there's no background. Now you can make the black shirt. You can make it red, white, blue, purple, whatever color you want. And all you're gonna have on there is the design. So this looks pretty good. Now let's see what it looks like on something else. We're not gonna print this on anything else, but let's just see what it looks like. So let's say we were gonna do a mug. Let's go with this one. And then we can add our mug like that. Let's say we wanna have somebody holding our mug. Then we have this over here. Now what I love about the mock-up generator on Kittle is the fact that the image conforms to the product itself. So as you can see, it looks curved. It looks like it's part of it. It's not just flat pasted on there. If you move it like this, you can see it goes under the shadow. It goes under the fingers. Same thing on this side. It looks really good. All right, so those are our two different mockups. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it on a shirt. So I'm gonna put it on this shirt right here. We're gonna offer a white one. Then we're gonna download our mockup. Let's offer it on a black shirt now too. So let's move that a little bit over here. Let's make this into a black shirt. Let's download that mockup. And then let's make it on a gray shirt. So we're gonna put that here. Let's make this a little bit of a dark gray. And let's download that mockup. Now we're gonna go back to the editor and we're gonna download the actual design because without the design, we can't really do anything. <laughs> so let's go ahead now and download and remember what I talked about when it comes to the specs. So 15 inches by 15 inches, or I think it was 38 centimeters by 38 centimeters with a minimum resolution or DPI of 300. Also, when you go to download, you can automatically remove the background simply by just checking this off. But since we were gonna make a mock-up, I removed it on the system itself. Now, when it comes to the file type that we're gonna download, we're always gonna go for a PNG. The reason is because with a PNG, you can remove the background and keep it off, so it'll be transparent. Whereas a JPEG or a JPG, once you save it, any transparent parts will turn back to white. So that background that we removed, it will be back on there. So remember, always go with PNG because it allows you to keep transparent parts in the image. So it's time to start making our actual products. So since we're gonna be using Etsy as our marketplace, first we're gonna need to create an account and become a seller. After we do that, once we're on the AutoDS platform, we're simply gonna go up here. Now, if you already have an account, this is just gonna give you this little pencil where you can click on it to add a new account. But if you don't have a store yet, this is gonna tell you to add a store. And then on here, it'll give you this add a store option. And from here, we're gonna choose whichever one of these we're using to sell our items. In this case, like I said, we're going with Etsy, so let's click on that. And then once you click on continue, it'll ask you to connect your store to the AutoDS platform. And then from there, you're pretty much good to go. You're pretty much good to get started. So let's continue. So now we're back over at AutoDS and I want to offer this t-shirt right here. So this is the one that we're gonna go with. It starts at $7.25. Now there's a few different colors to choose from, but we're gonna do that in a second. Let's go ahead and edit the product. Now, once we're on here, the first thing we're gonna have to do is choose whether we wanna upload the design to the front of the shirt or the back of the shirt. In this case, I'm gonna leave it in the front. So I'm gonna upload the design. All right, so that's what it's gonna look like and I think it looks pretty good. All right, if you wanna make it smaller, all you have to do is click on it and grab these little squares and adjust it and then we can move it around as well. So I think that looks pretty good as is. Now, if you're not using Kittle and whatever service it is that you're using doesn't offer a mock-up service, you can go ahead and preview it and that's what it's gonna look like. So this image will be automatically uploaded when you upload your product. Now, if you wanna choose different colors to be able to offer, you can do that over here. So we can change this. We can go ahead and add. Let's add Cardinal because I think that's a great color. I love that one. Let's also go with Kelly Heather and let's do turquoise. Now, as you can see, it didn't change the color, but if we click on them, the change will be implemented. And we have the green and the turquoise. Actually, the turquoise looks really good. Now, the last thing that I wanna show you on this page is also one of the most important ones, and that's this print quality message up here. If you have a low quality file, this will say print quality, bad. And instead of being green, it'll be red. If that's the case, you're not gonna be able to upload your image to your product. The system will not accept it, simply because it's not gonna be a good quality print. It's not gonna be a good quality end product. The image is probably gonna come out blurry, it can come out pixelized, and just overall, it's not gonna look good. So what we're looking for is this to be in green, 
and say print quality good or great. In this case, it's great, so it's gonna print perfectly fine. So now all we have to do is simply click on save. So once we do that, the item is going to be added to our draft section where we can make any necessary adjustments to the title, the images, the description and everything else. So now what we're going to do is run over to our draft section and we're going to see our product right here, the unisex t-shirt. So over here on the right hand side, let's click to edit. And this is where we're going to edit everything that we need to about the product itself. So we can change the title. We can make something that's relevant to the actual product or design. We can change the category, which for the most part is always going to be out of filled and it's going to be correct. Then we can change our tags. This is gonna be for our analytics. So these tags can help us keep track of sales and certain products. Now, very important, here under shipping methods, you are gonna to have to select your shipping method. Personally, I always suggest to go with standard because Express isn't always gonna make a huge difference. Standard is gonna be two to nine business days while Express is gonna be two to five. So standard still has the possibility of getting the product there pretty quick. Although it's not guaranteed, chances are it's gonna get there pretty fast maybe within seven to eight business days. Now, everything else down here is gonna change depending on what platform you're selling on, but let's continue to description. And on here is where you're gonna be able to change anything that you need to for the description itself. Then we also have our variants. This is gonna be the page where you can change all of these different prices. So for this, you can simply click on this checkbox up here, click on edit, and then you can change the price either flat out. So set a sell price of, I don't know, $23, or you can add on to your production cost a certain percentage that you wanna make profit. You can also add on different types of fees. So if you know the Etsy fees that you're gonna get charged, you can add that on here as well. How many you have of the products or how much profit you just wanna make overall. So let's say you wanna make $10 on each sale, just put $10 on here and every single product will be incremented by $10. Then running over to images, we have all of the different product images. Here we can go ahead and edit them as well. There's a built-in image editor. And now once we have everything to our liking and everything optimized, all we have to do is simply click on save and import. And then the product is gonna go live to our store within seconds, ready for customers to come and make their first purchase. Now, after this, the next thing you need to do is simply start uploading more and more products. The more you upload, the more chances you're gonna have to make a sale. But remember, always make sure that you stay niche down to your particular niche. Don't go off niche. Don't offer irrelevant products to your niche always stay consistent because this is what people are going to look at. If you have products all over the place, chances are they're probably going to go somewhere else, somewhere that specializes in a particular niche or in a particular topic or category. Now, if you want to learn more about the Etsy marketplace, then just go ahead and check out this video right here. In it, Laurent explains absolutely everything that you need to know about starting dropshipping or selling on Etsy. Now, the video is about dropshipping, but the premise is the same. Everything that's related to dropshipping, aside from the product research, is going to be relevant to your print on demand business. So make sure you check it out because it can be a huge help. What did you think of this video? What do you think of print on demand? And what do you think about starting print on demand with AI? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. I would love to hear what you think about this topic. Huge thank you to him for watching, especially if you made it all the way to the end. As always, if you made it this far, that means you enjoyed the video. So make sure you smash that like button, hit that subscribe button, and ring that little bell notification so you don't miss out on any future videos. Once again, huge thank you to everyone for watching. My name is Mario with AutoDS, and I'll catch you all next time.